Good morning, everybody. I, um, I welcome you all this morning here. If you could please stand. We're going to start doing a, some people call it a moment silent. I call it prayer. Um, each one of you could do it in, in your manner. But let's start out with that. Thank you, and God heard you too. <laughs> <laughs> Please turn and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Good morning. Board Member Fernandez, Board Member Monestim, yes. Board Member Fano. On the phone. Mary Miller, Treasurer Weinberg. Here. Vice Chair Moss. Here. Chair Diaz. Here. We have a quorum. And, and Board Member Fernandez is on the way. She got caught yes. in something we're trying to get rid of, traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> It's a goal here. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's Give a me goal. an hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we have uh, the approval of the agenda. Move it. No changes on the agenda. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. second. And all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. None. All right. I want to, before I go into anything else, um, make sure that we have had great people that have worked very hard in the past. My Vice Chairman, Commissioner Moss, has stated and several times here, we've all discussed it, and how this organization did so well, and even in some moments that, unfortunately, um, it went through, and we have new days in front of us. So with that, I want to bring up somebody very special. I call him AJ, but everybody knows him as Arthur Meyer, to uh, receive a special recognition from all of us. To the front? Yeah, we'll go to the wall. <laughs> 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 In honor of the more recent. Good morning, Ms. Fernandez. Good morning. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have to, I have to warn uh, Commissioner Monestein. Uh, AJ used to be my seatmate, and I was always kicking him under the table. So. Oh, that's definitely next. Got, okay. <laughs> AJ's an awesome name. My son is AJ too. So, 
Exactly. <laughs> but thank you, AJ. <laughs> Mrs. C's, I love it. All right. So with that, we got the declaration of voting conflicts. So anybody has any voting conflicts up here? No. Let the record reflect that no goes across the, the dais. Do we have to, I see, no. are you We're okay? Good. We're good. You're okay, just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, citizens comment. I have one, my friend Lawrence, here he comes. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Prior to the MDX opening, I, I had... Before you begin, your na oh, yes. name and address, thank, please. Thank you. Lawrence Percival, Greater Kendall Community Activists Incorporated, 11945 Southwest 127 Court, Miami 33186. Mr. Chairman, board members, prior to the MDX ribbon cutting, uh, I had the privilege of being, Margo and I, and my boss, had the privilege of navigating across the new roadway from end to end. I walked it, and then I drove in my vehicle, and I took probably 100 pictures of the aerial views looking out from the, from the new roadway all across West Kendall and East Kendall. It was really terrific. And I had asked Javier if I could write an article Although I didn't get it completed in time, it turned out to be more than um, an op-ed type of thing where I, I gave praise to the vision to this board and to the members of the board for bringing this to fruition. As many of you know, I've been a community activist and a proponent of what MDX has been doing probably since around 2000. So I've been here to many of your meetings in the past, but I did take offense to one comment that, that Javier made when he referred to me as a thorn. I'm much more than a thorn. Just ask Commissioner Moss. I'm a pain in places he doesn't like. <laughs> and probably the consummate person to speak to that would be Joe Martinez. Uh, but you know, Commissioner, uh, I've, I've been actively speaking on behalf of the community for quality of life issues. This roadway and now our new one going out to 157, it's extremely important for all of us to see to it that that comes to fruition in my lifetime. Um, I'm a little older than you, Commissioner Moss. He and I went to the same high school one year apart and I'm always gonna be older than you. It's nice to know somebody older than you, isn't it? <laughs> So, this is Margot, by the way, and, and she ran on the roadway and had a great time, and she was there for the ribbon cutting. Uh, my, my boss, Daniel, couldn't be here today. He had a conflict with something else, but I, I cannot begin to give you enough praise, both for your vision and seeing this through to the logical conclusion. In fact, I went on there today on my way to come on to, to go to the airport. I'd never been over the flyover to the airport, so I missed it, and I wound up having to go to 27th Avenue and come back around, which actually is more convenient in some ways, because you get off at 17th and come across over the bridge, and it's actually faster than, than the other direction if none of you have tried that. But I've expressed to Javier, and I don't know if this is possible, but if there should be an opening on this board, I've ask the chair and others if it is possible i'd love to have an opportunity to represent the community at large as an activist and being a member of your board if that should ever be possible so with those comments i thank you for listening and mr chairman mr moss all the great leadership that you've brought to this board could there could never be enough praise for either of the two of you for your leadership and what you've done fighting through the trying times that you've had. And hopefully the state's gonna settle down and shut up and let you guys do your jobs and bring it on to the next most important thing. Beyond the, the new 157, is there something else being envisioned that you're looking at? Came to the right meeting, you'll see a presentation. You'll see a presentation on our work program. Excellent, so. thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 
And, Thank you, gentlemen. And Lawrence, right. and, and Lawrence, if more people were thorns in our community, we would have a much Remember, better community. Remember, I'm not a thorn. We would have a much better community. You know that we've always okay. said that. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. All right. No, hey, why not? Come on up. <laughs> you have the music? Carlos. Thank you, thank Make you. Make sure, AJ, you state your full name and address for the record. Arthur A.J. Lines. Meyer, 8901 Southwest 103rd Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33176. <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to be here uh, this morning. Uh, thank you to all the board members. But most of all, I want to thank God for the opportunity to serve this community uh, and to be on this board for five years. It was uh, a challenging five years at that for those of you both on the board, staff, and, and members that are here today. Uh, but it was a fun five years, and, and we accomplished a lot for this community, and I'm very proud of that and my fellow board members, loose. And unfortunately, I couldn't see uh, be beautiful Shelly today, but uh, thank you for, for all your support as well, Shelly. Uh, I also wanted to just share that I don't think any other board member uh, will have the opportunity to dress up as Bob Ross for Halloween, nor do the Irish jig, so I will take those two home with me forever, so thank you for that. Uh, and, and look, I'm here to serve, so if there are opportunities uh, that come along for, for any of you, I'm, I'm here to serve this community, so thank you so much for that opportunity. God bless. Thank you, AJ. Yeah. Thank you, AJ. And um, that was well, a challenge in we'll there, talk yeah. another time. <laughs> So, um, no, we can just move on to the next item then. Anybody else? I'm sorry, before I do close. Anybody else would like to speak at this time? Let the record show that nobody else came forth. All right. So with that, um, citizen's comment is now closed. Uh, I need a, a vote on approval of the summary minutes. Move it. A motion? Second. Second by... So, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? None. All right. Regular agenda, MDX fiscal year 2022 budget. Mr. Executive Director. Yes, sir. Um, I, we have a very short presentation. Marie Schaefer is going to address the annual budget, and then Juan Toledo is going to speak to the work program. We will be concise. We briefed uh, the members. Um, I, I would say that, you know, um, we're doing everything we possibly can within the limitations and serving this community and providing the services necessary. And I guess that is the overall, and I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Marie. Thank and you, And we're, we're discussing both uh, of the bullet points that are under. Correct. The budget. Correct. Okay. Correct. So it's approval of the FY 2022 operating budget and approval of the FY 2022 to 2026. Through 2026, five-year work program. Correct. Okay. With that. Good morning, you. board members. We put together a, a brief uh, presentation on the annual budget for fiscal 22, as well as fiscal 22-26 work program. Um, the overview of the annual budget consists of revenue of $225 million, operating expense of $52.2 million, capital expenditures of $112 million, debt service of 111. million, and so the total expenditures and capital expenditures about $276 million. And we forecast a debt coverage ratio of a 1.55. So what this um, annual budget supports, it supports 2 million drivers weekly and 7 million drivers annually. And that's a conservative number that doesn't count passengers in a vehicle. We just looked at unique cars that touch our roadway. Um, so we provide a safe, reliable uh, travel destination and connection to seaport, airport, to work, discretionary trips. And for the public's purpose, we operate 836, the Dolphin Expressway. We operate 112, the airport, um, as well as 924, the Gratney, 874, Don Shula, and 878, Snapper Creek. So those are the five roadways that we are responsible for. Revenue forecast is $225 million total revenue. I think it's important to note that this uh, budget does not include any increase to toll rates, nor does it inc uh, include any CPI adjustments. And I think it should also be noted that this authority has never actually implemented any CPI, even though we do have a policy in effect. Um, the board has been very um, discretionary on when to implement it and whether we need it or not. 
So there will be no CPI um, in this budget. Um, we've also allocated an offset to revenue of $5.8 million for the cash back program, the customer awards, for this upcoming fiscal year. We're getting ready to complete fiscal 21's um, financial statements, and we'll be cutting checks in November, and we hope to distribute them uh, the first week in December is when we're going to be cutting checks for the fiscal year that just ended. Um, our total revenue is about $115 million. Um, it's up 8%, but I just want to caution everybody. Um, it really it is up comparing it to 21, which actually 21 was a little bit depressed because of COVID, and obviously traffic is starting to come back significantly. So we think that overall the toll revenue should reach FY29 uh, uh, revenue base. Budgetary expenses, again, it's $276 million. Debt service and capital expenditures are 81% of the budget. And just as a reference, the, the debt service, even though we say it's debt service, it really is for the investment of capital um, infrastructure in this community because all of the bonds that were borrowed were for the purpose of expanding um, capacity, capacity in, in the roadway and the expressway. So all of the debt service and capital expenditures were for infrastructure. Um, that leaves $52 million for the operating budget. And the operating budget should be, it's pretty con comparable to what FY19 was, which was pre-COVID and pre-litigation. Of that $52 million, $20 million is allocated as a pass-through budget from the CCSS, which is the customer service back office with the state of Florida and SunPass. All the operating expenses and debt service will be funded through the current revenue stream. And then capital expenditures will be a mix between the current revenue stream as well as funds on hand. Some of the major expenses you have on the agenda today, actually traffic management center is actually one of the items on the agenda today. Um, very important, it monitors tra traffic flow, monitors safety concerns, they dispatch FHP when needed. Um, we have general system maintenance, which is the asset maintenance um, service that we have, mowing, sweeping, structure maintenance, repair, lighting, um, service patrol, seven days a week, 24 hours, including holidays, seven vehicles at all times on our expressways. We have a rapid incident response. If there is an accident and once FAP tells us it's ready to clear, we clear it to make sure traffic continues to flow. Um, Road rangers are able to provide gas, towing, uh, minor repairs. If someone has a belt broken in their vehicle and they break down, if they're able to do a minor repair, they'll do it. Um, and it's all no charge to the drivers. So we do provide that service um, to our drivers on our expressways. Um, toll operations, we do partner with the state on the, the back office. We do have a software um, that we have on our own side that we support. We have staffing for our image review and, and also for uh, overflow of answering phones. And the overall management of the organization is we have two general labor consultants as well as other professional teams. We have a financial advisor, we have uh, outside counsel, um, and we also have uh, 30, we have 30 employees in total in the organization. Our debt service is um, almost $112 million. Um, it is for to pay the principal and interest, and as I indicated, all of that debt was for the sole purpose of building infrastructure. Um, the board has a policy of a 1-5 coverage, and the trust indenture requires 1-2 coverage. The 1-5 coverage that's in the, the board policy, the purpose was that was to make sure we kept our credit rating at investment grade. So we forecast this year to be somewhere around 1.55 for fiscal year 22. So it's, we're above the uh, board policy as well as the trust indenture should be compliant. Capital expenditures are 112 million. One million is for non-project capital, meaning that it's not in the work program. Um, we're gonna replace our vehicle fleet. We have about 10 vehicles, or probably anywhere from 12 to 15 years old. Um, so we're getting ready to re uh, replace that if we can find the vehicles. Um, we're gonna upgrade some of our uh, headquarters technology, and we have some minor repairs in the building that we need to take care of. So all of those three components, about a million dollars. Um, the work program, um, is $111 million, and this is just for the first fiscal year. There's a five-year total, I'll get to it in, in a moment. Um, but the majority of it is going to go to the Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP. Um, right now we do have the 395 836 under construction. That's in the work program. We finished up 874, which was the ramp connector that opened up 
in September, so we still have some expenditures that's included there as well. And then 57th Avenue and 87th Avenue projects that are closing out um, for 836, um, those expenditures there. And I believe also on your agenda, there's another project that we did provide for, which is 836-24, which is the connector. Um, yeah, 836-34, correct? Yeah, thank you. Um, and then we have some renewal replacement projects, and, and Juan's going to get into specific projects, but really we concentrated on the earlier part of this work program, the safety and preservation of the expressway system. So as I indicated, the $111 million is for the first fiscal year of 2022, and then you have fiscal year 23, 24, 25, 26. And what we really do for our work program is that every year we evaluate the work program, we move projects in um, as funding becomes available, we reassess our cost estimates, we determine what the needs are of the expressway system and what becomes a priority. So right now the priority is safety and preservation. We, we are funding strictly from, from cash on hand as well as from the revenue stream. There is no new debt um, that is being contemplated for fiscal uh, 22. Um, and as I indicated, in the work program, we have only funded what we can afford. There's probably phases of projects um, that are in the work program that is maybe just for design or for right-of-way acquisition, and we'll move in the construction or design uh, build phase at a later time as we can uh, afford it. And we also have about a $9 billion of strategic projects that are unfunded, but those are outside the window of the, the fiscal year 2026. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Juan Toledo, and he's going to speak about the specific projects. By our treasurer. Good morning, board members. Good morning. And as Marie mentioned, um, the work program is focusing around current commitments what we can build with the cash that we have on hand and system preservation. So with that, the main project that we have ongoing right now is the joint uh, partnership with the DOT with the I-36, I-95, uh, I-395 interchange. That's a project that's currently ongoing and we're expecting it to be completed by fiscal year 2024, so calendar year 25. We talked about the, the Kendall Parkway. We're, even though we're very early in that project, we're still doing a lot of planning. We're trying to do as much advancement as we can. So we started up the right-of-way acquisition piece again, willing seller process, and we're continuing the permitting phases of that project. And I'm gonna get a little bit into that with the Kendall Park representation a little bit later on. Again, one of the, one of the projects that we consider the unofficial first phase of the parkway is the heft uh, ramp connections, the, the westbound connections from 836 to the turnpike. That movement doesn't exist today. There is no connection between the turnpike and west, southwest Dade. This is the first project that's gonna introduce that. And critical is the connections to and from the Dolphin Park and Ride. That project is on the agenda today for a uh, short list of the uh, design build firms. And we'll, we can talk a little bit more about that project, but this is a project that we are advancing and it's fully funded in the work program. The 924 extension to the west uh, with the heft. This is another project that we have in partnership with the Turnpike. We're currently uh, f funding with, the, we only, the only thing we have funded on this project right now is the right of way acquisition piece or coordination. And the portions of the project, as part of the Turnpike project that is ongoing, they're building the, the structure, sub substructure, basically the foundations for our bridges that'll be going into the Turnpike those are gonna get built as part of the turnpike project. Now what that does is that it, it, it makes it so that when we go in, we don't disturb the turnpike traffic at that point. We're trying to, we're coordinating with the turnpike so that, to make sure that we don't disrupt traffic twice. And that's part of the coordination that, we're, that we have and that's what's funded in this, pro, in this work program for the 924. And as Marie mentioned, we have a commitment, a responsibility to maintain our system and keep it uh, in, in perfect standard. The renewal replacement program is funded in this project, system-wide bridge rehabilitation and joint repairs. We've already contracted that job. We actually issued an NTP this week, and we're starting the work on making sure that all our bridges are kept to the standard that they're supposed to be and that we don't have any issues moving forward. Not that we ever had, but always keep it in safe condition. And then in the, under the plan projects, we have the system-wide uh, markings, pavement markings, make sure that all the, all the striping on the roadway is visible. Class, uh, classified coding, LED, just to name a few, and you can see the list there of the projects that we have planned and as funding becomes available, we'll, we'll be pushing these projects forward. Safety is another uh, initiative with MDX. 
We've already uh, gone out to the street with the wrong way safety program. This is the program to, for that we enhancing our, our ramp exits so that people don't come in the wrong way and disrupt traffic and cause uh, safety issues on the, on the expressway. We see a lot of that, but we've also seen a lot of, uh, with the projects that we have done, we've seen those numbers go down and the ramps that already have these initiatives in place. So that's the work program in a nutshell. Okay, so that's it? You're done. All right, so I would like our, our treasurer, Ms. Weinberg, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, in essence, that was my treasurer's report. Uh, but I did want to, uh, uh, first of all, congratulate Marie and her staff again for, I know they worked very hard and along with Javier to put this budget together. We're finally back to pre-COVID, pre-litigation numbers, uh, steadily, I think our operating budget remained basically the same despite some rising costs, and that's thanks to the management of the team. We've got no CPI yet again. I want to just recap. We've got no toll increase yet again forecasted for our next uh, 2022 year. And um, we also have the cashback program. I, I have to share, I, I met a, a, a very uh, supporter of MDX just uh, Monday. I had a chance to tour the Federal Reserve Bank uh, along with Senator Rodriguez and Representative Barrera. And uh, their branch manager and vice president said to me, I ride your highways every day, particularly 112. And I'm very happy with the cashback program. And I said, wow, that is a great. We love to hear from the community, I've, from Uber drivers who get me all the time, uh, all the way up to our Federal Reserve Bank uh, local branch here. So I'm very proud of the work that we are doing. And this budget reflects very well how we manage to do all the work and the, and the service we do to the community. So no new debt is another big uh, uh, bullet item that I'm very proud to see on, on, on this budget. And I think we're going to continue to have a great a uh, year next year, coming into 22, with this great board. I really just wanted to recap the highlights of this budget. And our work program is very exciting. We have two great items coming up in the agenda over the next few minutes. Um, our work is out there. There is work to be had on MDX, and we welcome the community to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, board members? Board Member Fernandez? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Juan, I have a couple questions on the LED uh, conversion that you have in the work program? Currently today, how many lights are we maintaining on the expressways? Total number of lights? I don't have that number off the top of my head, to be honest, but we have on, on, on the system, we, I can tell you that all, all, all but the 878 has been converted to LED. So the only one left is the 878, which you have as part of this project. That's correct. Okay. Um, I know we had this discussion yesterday with Javier and your team about the savings that we're going to be having because of the LED, right? right? And I understand you guys have meters that um, are part of our system today, but we're paying a flat rate to FPL. I believe so. I'll verify that with my staff and, and confirm, but I believe that that's what we're doing today. Because what I would like to see come back to the board is maybe in January or February um, an analysis on what those savings are, what we pay in our bill, whether it's paying meter or a flat rate, and how we can enhance the system. Because smart city is, is something that's happening, it's coming, and I think there's a lot that we could do with those savings um, to enhance our infrastructure, whether it's cameras, um, smart nodes, Wi-Fi, many different things. I know the county and FDOT were in the process of doing something similar, and I think if we had the highway system on the same path, that would be great. So I would like to see a report come back on the differences of what we can achieve with those savings if we were to do it one way or the other versus paying the flat rate or metering and what, how we can enhance the system. Most definitely. I'll get me my team. We'll, I'll provide... Uh a summary of what we have, what we're doing. I know that we, uh, I can tell you that we have been talking to FPL on cer certain initiatives that we're looking at and so forth, so we'll put all that together and we'll come back to the board with a presentation on that. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. Yeah. Vice Chairman, awesome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your, your leadership. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me just say on the 5.8 million, the cash uh, give back, we need to make sure that the community knows that MDX is doing this. 
You know, we need to make sure that, you know, we need to let the people know uh, that that program is a, a special program uh, for this community and for, you know, those uh, residents who utilize our system. So please, let's, let's make sure that we, uh, we do a good job of marketing that. Uh, the 874 lighting, Mr. Executive Director, you're still working on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> How do we utilize our consultants? I see Rick Crooks here from EAC. Um, how, how do they factor into to this budget? Um, the budget reflects the, the funding of both GECs. We have uh, uh, EAC, or Rick Crooks, and we have HNTB. Um, they serve as an extension of our staff, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. And what we do is we focus HNTB on pre construction services, and primarily, and I say this generally, primarily EAC is operations and construction services, post-construction services. Uh, there have been times that we've, because of conflicts or different issues, that we've changed both of them, but we use both of those general engineering consultants as an extension of our staff. Okay. And that's how, that's how the authority can maintain only 30 in-house employees. Okay. All right. And, and so then we fully utilize that service. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I want to um, say, Mr. Chairman and, and, and board members, that despite what we do as a board, I want to make sure that we double down on the way that we maintain our roadways. I have always used MDX as the gold standard when it comes down to landscaping, and maintenance and those kinds of things. And I want to make sure that we continue to, to do that and we don't lose sight of that because it makes a difference in this community. You know, when, when you ride on other roadways and you see what's happening there and then you ride on an MDX roadway, it's a totally different experience and, and it's important to continue to maintain that. You know, so I want to make sure there's a part of this budget that we don't get to the point where we're Let's do projects, but let's forget about aesthetics and the way our facilities look and the way that our facilities are maintained. And I want to recognize Rick Johnson. Rick, please stand up. Rick is your representative on the Miami Neat Streets Board. You know, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> involved and responsible for a lot of the maintenance and upkeep, you know, along MDX, you know, roadways. And, uh, you know, he's always been a great member. When I was chair of uh, Miami Neat Streets, he's always been a great member and a great representative of this particular group. And anything that we ask, you know, him to take a look at, he would certainly do it. And again, I want to make sure that MDX continues to be the standard bearer as it relates to how you should maintain roadways and facilities, you know, in uh, this community. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. No, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Always a statesman. I love to be back. <laughs> Madam Treasurer? Yes, uh, thank you for those comments, Commissioner Moss. I, I, I think it's worthy of always repeating uh, how maintenance and rehabilitation of our system continues to be a, a very critical line item in our budget. And I'll echo uh, Marie's slide uh, relating to even the replacement of some of our vehicles that have been on the roadway too long. I, I too, like you, uh, use MDX as the gold standard. Even as a northern uh, county uh, resident who rides the different roadways, I always challenge people to ride the difference. That's my new tagline, by the way, for our PR team. Ride the difference on MDX. You really feel it on how, and your car thanks you. Um, your car thanks you when you're riding an MDX roadway, not just from the aesthetics perspective, but also the, the, the terrain and the safety uh, components. And now we're adding to those safety from lighting to wrong way safety signage. So thank you so much for, for pointing that out. And that is something that we're constantly working on. Member Monestein. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In regards to the um, replacement of our vehicles, I wonder whether there's an effort being made uh, to uh, purchase or acquire um, either um, uh, electric vehicles or other uh, more climate-friendly vehicles. I know the county has been uh, um, uh, uh, 
more sensitive to being more climate friendly? And, and before you answer, because I want to ask my question one sh a shot, adding to what Commissioner uh, Board Member Moss, the Vice Chair, just uh, stated, to the extent that there is an ability, uh, Mr. Director, to even improve the aesthetic and the greenery of our roadways, being Miami-Dade County, I think it's perhaps <clears throat> in doing this, associated, associate that with, uh, with, with what everybody's doing right now and a climate-friendly message. Because the greener we are along our roadways, the more we speak to the needs of uh, Miami-Dade County as a climate challenge uh, a county. And, and these two questions, I think we can pair them and, and show uh, 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 more sensitivity to, to where we are, who we are as a, as, a, uh, as a geographic location and how we can partake into that message and be in a more climate friendly region. Mr. Executive Director. Y yeah, if I, if, I, if I may, Marie, um, um, to respond you know, to, to board member Monestine, appreciate that. And actually one of the things that we have planned for this board is to, is to update our enhancement manual, our aesthetics enhancement manual. I think it's time to do that because this community continues to evolve. As far as climate change, it's interesting because we got the same question from Fitch about how we view it. Uh, the uniqueness of an expressway authority, the uniqueness of our model is that we do not depend on funding based on fuel consumption. We are agnostic to that. So as far as we're concerned, we welcome all alternative type. We participate in you know, autonomous, electric you know, type vehicles, and we want to see more of them our facilities. But further than that, back in 2010, actually started in 2007 with the extension of 836, but wholeheartedly in 2010 and then in 2014, when we got rid of our toll plazas, what we did is we lowered the carbon emissions on our highways because we, st we, we eliminated the stop and start conditions on our facilities. So every time we try to improve an interchange or we try to improve a movement, that is part of the focus. And I agree with you and I think that we should recognize in our aesthetic manual and in our policies that it is moving towards a more eco-friendly green uh, um, uh, system. And, and I would I would love to bring that to the board and, and, and workshop it with the board because I think it's time to do that. And, and Javier, in, 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 in the context of what the, the dean shared with us earlier, it's all about the messaging. Absolutely. You know, the, the great things you just said here, people out there need to know that. <laughs> they and need to know that we're not just building highways uh, because that's sometimes the criticism that we hear. But they know that we're being responsible. They need to know that we're being responsible. We're being climate friendly. We know that uh, we are here to stay in this region, and we're going to continue attracting more people in this region. And these are some of the efforts. Uh, I never thought about getting rid of the, uh, the toll uh, 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 the plazas uh, with such you know, a, a, a climate friendly move. But how, how many people know that? We need, we need to communicate that to our people out there through the chair, if I may, and I addressed uh, 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 Board Member Monestine's comment, but I also wanted to address the Vice Chair. Uh, this budget reflects an enhanced public information campaign. Um, we have been silent for a, f for a couple of years, and what we did here, and in, and in modifying and in adjusting this budget, you know, at, at mid-year pretty much, was a reflection of the comments that we heard from this board over the last three months. Mm -hmm. And it's important to get our message out. Not only those types of messages of what we do, but we do projects. And, and we, saw, we heard Mr. Percival speak. And what we don't do is after the project, convey the message to the community of what benefits they're seeing. Mm -hmm. Just in the last three weeks, the amount of calls that I get about the benefits of the extension of 874 and how it has changed yep. the traffic flow in West Kendall is amazing, and that's quality of life. And that's important to let everyone know that when MDX comes to do something, we're gonna enhance your quality of life. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. That sounds good. For thank you, Fernandez. Mr. Chair, sorry. I, I just wanna end. commend Javier and his staff because I, I think that that's important. It's the message we give. You know, coming from a traffic background, dealing with all three million residents in Miami-Dade County, I have to tell you that giving that message of what 
benefits do we see after a project is really important. Because a lot of people will say, well, it only save five minutes, because that's what they're assuming. It's not really the facts. And I commend you guys for including that in your budget as well, to give that message and to do an after analysis to show the public what the true savings are. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Board Member Fano, you wanted to add anything? Chairman. Chairman. Okay. Or, uh, Vice, Vice Chairman Moss. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. And, and again, I want to make sure from the aesthetic standpoint that our vendor that we currently uh, have in place, that they are doing an excellent job. And if they are not doing an excellent job, then we need to take a look at that situation, uh, Mr. Executive Director. And, and again, you know, I, I would you know, support that, I mean, because I want to make sure that they understand, you know, that there's a certain standard that we have here at MDX, and we want them to live up to, uh, to that standard. Okay. It's, you know, I, I think I said it uh, a couple of meetings ago, how important it is to get the information out to, to the public, especially with the give back. Um, I don't think there's any other authority in the state of Florida, at least, I don't know anywhere else, that does do that. Uh, and, and that is, uh, I think, an incredible part from us to make sure we do this in the way we're doing it. And that's something we promise to people and it's something that we're delivering. And, I, and I'm very proud of that. But what uh, was the Vice Chairman has stated and followed by my co all my colleagues is that we need to get the information out. And we do it in some way in other boards and it, and it works, but still you can never do enough. And we need to find ways here since there's been so much negative um, wrong facts put out, we want to make sure that and do it properly. So Mr. Executive Director, I, I believe, uh, I'll double check the, the budget mm -hmm. as far as this side of the fence that we're all discussing about, but I could see and hear from my colleagues that we're very united on this issue. So we need to get that um, ramped up as much as possible and every level, social, media, uh, direct, whatever form that we could make sure people understand properly what's being done here uh, because it's on us, not on them. So we hear you. Please let's uh, bring back to the next meeting more clarification as to the project moving forward. If I may, Mr. Mr. Chair, I, well, we don't have committees per se right now, but we did have a public communications and inter, I mean uh, a public communications committee in the past, and I'll be happy to work with with staff Javier. Um, I'll be happy to work with staff in, in putting something together that we can bring back to the board. Um, I came up with another slogan. Better life, better ride. Um, I, I, the last, last campaign we launched was how many years ago? Five, six years ago, Safe, Reliable, Convenient, MDX. Um, so yeah, it's definitely time to come up with a, with a more, even stronger indicative of what it is that we do. And I'll volunteer, Mr. Chair, to work with staff on that. Sounds good. Thank you. you know, in the Marine Corps, that we, we would never hold our hand and volunteer for anything. <laughs> 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 It would turn out pretty bad sometimes. <laughs> so uh, with that said and done, I, I appreciate all the comments from everybody concerned. Let's move over to, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, do we need to vote? Yes. Okay. Vote, yeah. So do I have a motion? Move for approval from? <laughs> Treasurer Weber. <laughs> Second by <laughs> member <laughs> Modesty. <laughs> all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Okay. Thank you. So we move on to the next item. Item Would you B. Like me to read it? Want to read it? Go ahead. Read All it. right. Item B. Approval to reject. Stop two earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> approval to reject two bids and award contract for MDX ITB 20-22-01 Transportation Management Center, four million eight hundred sixty-two thousand sixty-two dollars and forty cents. Mr. Chairman, Juan Toledo will address the board and, and give you a summary. Please do one. Go ahead. Board members, this is for the, tra the Transportation Management Center, the TMC operations. Uh, we went out with an invitation to bid, a low bid procurement. We had five uh, bidders. 
the number, the number one and the number two bidders were, did not meet the prerequisite criteria, which was that they had to have completed a similar contract or have an ongoing contract for two years within the last five. Uh, the number one bidder, GovCom, they didn't have the experience. They were using a sub to meet that requirement. And the number two bidder, Computer Aid Inc., they haven't done this work at all. What they used is a turnpike job that's more related to toll maintenance, uh, or toll equipment maintenance. So neither of these two firms had the experience to meet the prerequisite criteria. The number three firm, ACOM, met the criteria and provided the lowest responsive bid. Um, their bid, 4.8 million, was below the engineer's estimate, and before you is the uh, recommendation to award it to ACOM. Okay. Any questions, Ben? Go ahead. Yes, I, I did have a question, uh, uh, Juan, uh, when we met, and I did want us to just cover it right quick. Um, my, um, uh, I thought, finally, at the moment, was uh, how often we come within, once a project is completed, how often we come within the estimated cost prior to commencement of construction, et cetera, and when we get these bids. First of all, it should be noted that we run a very tight procurement program, and I'm very proud to see that our staff uh, rejects when necessary. We do have prerequisites for your firms to, to put in your bids, and we ask that you to stick to those. Um, I have no problem um, uh, approving this, but I did want you to, to talk about our, our extensive process so, Board Member Luz uh, Weinberger, uh, we, we get measured through the Florida Transportation Commission on how we procure our jobs and how we come in within our engineer's estimate. When we look at these, uh, when we look at any procurement, we go out, you know, we do the analysis of the cost, what the current markets are, what, you know, for a service contract like that is, you know, we look at rates, we look at salaries, we make sure that our estimates are within the current industry ranges. Um, I can tell you that we've, we've consistently met the FTC goals at MDX, and uh, before uh, less than a handful of times, uh, we've, we've not come in within the engineer's estimate on a project. Very good. Um, I did want, it, I want us to uh, clear that up and say that we do get evaluated by the Florida Transportation Commission as an agency. Um, we, that's another layer of, of transparency and, and of sharing of information that we undergo, and we're evaluated in two things, right, Juan? Time and money? That's correct. What's sexier than that? I mean, uh, so thank you. Yeah, I, I did say sexier. I also want to be clear that um, this is being simulcast live, and that's important for transparency. Absolutely. It's something that we brought forward uh, when this board took over. And I want to make sure that that's uh, always uh, remembered by the board members. All right, so with that, do I have a motion? Moved. Move to accept recommendation by staff. Do I have a second? Second by the vice chairman. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? None. Okay, next item. Mr. Attorney. Item C, approval of contract extension and an increase in budget for the current TMC vendor, $225,000. Okay. Board members, this this uh, you're, you're, you're you're on the spot today, today man. Today. You know, well, you know yeah. it's what we do here. It's, no, you, know, it's, <laughs> you know, some places say robando cámara. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, trust me, that's not my goal. Uh, we're live. Board members, this contract, this uh, item is also for the uh, TMC. This is for the current vendor. This is to extend their contract through December 31st, so that we can maintain continuity of service while we transition the new firm into this uh, job. So basically, it's just extending the contract to the end of the year, and then by, by December 31st, ACOM will be fully enthralled into the services. Okay. Any discussion? Any issues? Do I have a motion? Moved. Moved by uh, Treasurer Weinberg. Second by Vice Chairman Moss. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Next item. Item D, approval of technical evaluation committees, three shortlisted firms, for MDX contract RFP 22-01, design build services for a HEF ramp, $63,661,900, and approval of a $100,000 stipend for shortlisted proposers who are not awarded the contract. Any, dis any discussion on this? Well, go ahead and state it, please. Okay. Board members, this is for the, uh, this is to 
approve the technical evaluation committee uh, shortlisting of the design build firms for the 836-34 westbound connections from 836 to the heft. Um, this was a procurement that was put out uh, about 45 days ago. The technical evaluation committee met on Monday. We reviewed and evaluated the proposals and we shortlisted the top three firms, which is uh, Condori America, OHL USA, and Halley Engineering Contractors. Uh, before you is the, uh, the, the recommendation to shortlist these three firms to go to the next process, which is the technical proposal and price phase. That would take, uh, we expect that after, subsequent to this meeting, the RFP will go out by the end of next week, and technical proposals and prices should be submitted to MDX before the end of the year, and, our, and we anticipate that we'll be back in front of the board for a final award on this project by the end of January. Okay. There's also another action item on this item, which is the approval of a stipend for the RFP phase. It's $100,000 to the number two and the number three teams that are moving forward. And what this does is that it incentivizes these proposers to bring their A game to the proposal, to the proposal process, making sure that they're looking at all types of risk mitigation and you know, pricing down to the wire. Uh, it also gives us an advantage because we, in essence, buy the proposals. If for whatever reason, the number two or the number three teams present a concept that we feel is valuable to the project, by establishing the stipend, we, can, we keep those concepts and we can choose to incorporate that into our, our project at any time. So it's an advantage both ways to the contractor and to MDX. Okay, any questions for uh, member Monos team? Uh, how long has the stipend uh, policy been in effect? The stipend policy has been around for years. We actually used the form, we, we, we got the formula from uh, the DOT design build process. It's a formula that's been established by, uh, by DOT a, long, a while back and is based on contract size and complexity. So in this case, we use the range between 50 million and 100 million dollar projects. We, we apply the, uh, the factor and we came out with $100,000. So the formula is established. How, how do we arrive at the 100? Thousand dollars. I mean, so, so you get the cost of the you get the cost of the job, mm -hmm. which in this case the estimate is like sixty eight million. Mm -hmm. You apply a factor of 0. 0.0015, and that gives you the hundred. So it's not a hundred thousand dollars for any uh, type of project. It's based on the cost of the project. It's based on the cost. That's correct. Uh, now, Mr. Chair, I, I like the concept. I like the fact that you know values can be found in. Um, projects or, or proposals that were not accepted. But to the extent possible, I think we need to probably uh, 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 research other terminologies that can be used in the policy ex instead of stipends. Uh, so, so, yeah, because the, the, the stipend sounds like, you know, uh, a free fall, something that's being, being given, you know, without any uh, return of value. Uh, just, just, just in a greater scheme of things, I, I like the idea. I like, you know, bringing in, uh, you know, whatever value is found in these other proposal to the adopted, uh, the recommended proposal. But, you know, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just uncomfortable with the, <laughs> with the, with the verb, with the Rem vernacular. Remember, we got to take one hat <laughs> yeah. off and put on another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a, a voucher. Yeah. <laughs> I may miss yeah. We understand. <laughs> it's not a giveaway. We will look at other other ways to call it. Or this is for value. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll look at this other ways to refer to it. Uh, so that's more. We will bring it to you uh, yeah. as a recommendation. Good point. All right. Yeah, I, it is. All right. Anybody else? Oh. Uh, I shared your concern uh, when we had our, our get together. My the hairs in the back of my neck stood up basically because of the wording. One side and the other side being for the private construction sector in the last ten years, we spend money on our bids. I mean, million dollar bid, two million dollar bid, once four hundred uh, a four million dollar bid. Uh, nobody gives away money as I was thinking. However, what sold me was the ability to own whatever design concepts come back from those bids. Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, okay, because there's some serious, serious value engineering that can come out of there, et cetera. So now we own it, and I'm okay with that, but yes, uh, let's come up with a, with a more appropriate uh, term, perhaps, that uh, can sell us. I don't want anybody thinking that 
Uh, we're giving away money at MDX so people can come in and bid. That is certainly not what we're doing. We are trying to incentivize, perhaps, uh, those bids to come in at a greater value, uh, sort of a, I see it as a value added. Yep. We're paying a little more to get some value added mm -hmm. to, our, to our projects. Um, so with that, I think we can move it. Okay. I'll second it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second. Um, Mr. Director, you got that? We got it. All right. <laughs> so with that, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? None. All right. I think we're down to E. I, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. if Rodriguez, I may, right? I'd like to um, uh, take this item because it dovetails beautifully into the presentation, which if you indulge us for 10 minutes, uh, we'll give you a presentation on the Kendall Parkway. But item E is a request by Vice Chairman uh, Moss. Mm -hmm. And basically what he asked us was to provide an independent opinion on the record of the Kendall Parkway. And the record is the traffic study that was introduced. Um, you know, for, for a year and a half now, the media and certain folks have taken, you know, uh, non-facts to state that we're gonna be spending a billion dollars to save six minutes, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It makes no sense in the community, uh, but, it sticks as a headline in the Herald. And what we're planning on doing, and, and I've shared the traffic report with, with, uh, with Vice Chairman Moss, is we will bring back to this board a full analysis and a presentation on the facts. And not only on the facts, it's gonna dovetail on the conversation we had on the budget about getting the word out. We will ensure that this community at least knows the facts. They can conclude whatever they wanna conclude, but there is no mystery to why 600,000 people support a project in West Kendall and it has an approval rating of over 90%. This is not a new concept of building over wetlands. We do that every day in, in Florida because we live in an environmentally sensitive state. And there's permitting process for this. So when we did, uh, to go back a second, typically when a CDMP amendment is done, it is done based on planning. In this particular case, because the Miami-Dade Expressway Authority could not move a project forward without it being part of the Transportation Improvement Program, Long Range Transportation Plan, and consistent with the CDMP, the county had to move forward with a CDMP amendment. But the county had the benefit of having a full PD&E NEPA study as the basis to make their decisions. And they used that pd &E study to actually enhance the policies of the county, and which is why the county adopted the CDMP and why the governor's office, the, the cabinet, just adopted uh, the, uh, the CDMP uh, as valid. Um, we understand that the, that the opposition will probably appeal that, and that's fine. But I think this request, we're prepared to bring it back to you at, at our next board meeting and, and, and provide you the facts. And I think that's important. And it goes to the whole public perception, public outreach. Um, the facts are the facts. I mean, for, for too long, we haven't been able to get our word out. And we've had to sit back and just take it. And to, to invest the kind of time and energy that we have on that project, which is over seven years, the kind of public outreach that we've done on that project and the public support, and then to say that all you're gonna get is a six minute time saving from West Kendall to downtown, it simply doesn't make sense. But rather than me saying it or any board member saying it, we're going to let the facts speak for themselves. We're going to let the analysis speak for themselves. And we're going to put it here in a full presentation for you. Thank you. Mr. And now, Vice if, Chairman? If, if you indulge. Before, before. Sure. Mr. Vice Chairman? And, and, and thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I won't belabor the point. I think that the executive director has laid out quite clearly uh, what my concerns and issues, you know, are. And we need to make sure that we get a handle on this question because this question continues to be the headline uh, on any discussion as it relates to the parkway. And so we need to have an independent, you know, uh, analysis, you know, done and brought back to this board. And then we need to let the people know, you know, we got to, and, and, and I would suggest that we look at some alternative marketing opportunities that we target communities that perhaps we had not been targeting before who have a unique 
uh, uh, way of getting their information and who can be very supportive of what we do here uh, at MDX. And so I would make those recommendations. But again, we've got to address this issue because I'm, I'm tired of hearing it. And I just can't, it doesn't make logical sense to me that you talk about making this kind of an improvement and investment, you know, in the community, and you only save six minutes. I mean, that's ludicrous. You know? So anyway, uh, with that, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. At this point, to the chair, the presentation. he's got a presentation, and he is taking the, the so camera board time. Members, it is, no, uh, he's stealing <laughs> camera time today, man. It's, uh, trust me, I, I don't like it too much, because I've always said that I have a face for radio. So <laughs> oh, having said that, Thank you for this opportunity. It's been a yeah, while totally since we've threw been. Him off. Uh, it's, all right. <laughs> it's been a while since we've been able to give an update on the Kendall Parkway, and it's a pleasure to be able to do it today. Just a real quick recap: It's a 14-mile extension from where 836 ends today, out to Southwest 57th Avenue and south to Southwest 36th Street. It's going to be a multimodal facility. It's going to have multi-use recreational trails. It's going to expand the bus service that we've implemented to date on the shoulders, and it's just gonna be a congestion relief tool for Miami-Dade County. Um, aside from the project benefits that I have listed here, and we've talked about it now, there's been a lot of mistruths on this project, you know, and I, I remember watching a documentary a few years ago called Assume the Position, and it talked about how mistruths in history became fact that we've learned in school and growing up, and basically, a a line that came out of that is, you know, until the facts become legend, you print the legend. And that's what we have here today, you know. We've had a series of mistruths from the opposition that have become legend, and that's what you read. So I want to try to debunk a couple of that, a couple of things on this little slide. And, you know, a la Family Feud, I've personally surveyed 100 folks, and I've asked them, you know, hey, is Chrome Avenue in the Everglades? And you can see here, on that nice little bold line, yellow line, Chrome Avenue is nowhere near the Everglades. And if you look just to the right of that, our alignment is on the other side of Chrome. So that article about we're building it right through the Everglades, that's a mistruth. That is not, but it's legend. We're gonna convert fact into legend so that we can start printing facts. The other legend is that we're going to be destroying the Bird Drive Basin and the plans for the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan. In 2008, the South Florida Water Management District abandoned the plans to use the SERP area of the Bird Drive Basin, which is the area just on the top of, the, of this uh, slide. And you can see the hashed area now, which is a half mile buffer, which is what they're focusing on. The reason they abandoned the, the Bird Drive Basin is because the soil conditions in that area are too porous. And if they would have done what they wanted to do, it was just gonna flood the areas that are already developed to the east. So they had to get away from that. And now what they're focusing on is on that half mile buffer, and they're gonna be doing a canal that's gonna be connecting to all the canal systems in the area. Another mistruth is that we're going to be damaging our, our drinking waters. This is the West Field, uh, the West Well Field. As you can see, our alignment is outside of that well field. That was one of the commitments in the CDMP is that we were not going to be anywhere near the west well field. In fact, our project is gonna design all the drainage runoff to be conveyed away from this well field and treated off site before any water gets into the ground. Again, another mistruth, and we're, we're gonna make them facts. We're gonna, we're gonna make the facts legend. And let me just go back real quick. Um, just quickly to address this whole travel time thing that has come out about the three, six minutes. What the opposition did was that they took a very comprehensive study and they took a bit of information of vehicle, vehicle hours traveled, which is something that you use, information that you use to come up with other data. And what they did was that they used the entire study area. Now granted, the entire study area was between 836 to Southwest 152nd Street, between 97th Avenue and Chrome. You have areas of influence that have no benefit from this project that are impacting a number, and what they did was they extrapolated a 5% vehicle hours traveled reduction. 
not saving time, not travel. It's a number that you use to get other information. They applied that to what I can only assume is an hour commute and said, well, if you assume, if you, if you look at that 5% reduction and you multiply it into an hour, well, hey, that only gives you three minutes. And if you apply that in both directions, there's your six minutes. That is a complete falsehood. That's not the way you use that number. But again, the administrative hearing was a court setting. And what the opposing uh, attorneys did was that they led the witness. If I go in a court setting and tell you, hey, I have two popsicle sticks, and I ate another two popsicles, and now I have two, well, now I have four. Is that correct? You have no other choice than to agree with that because two and two is four. And that's what happened during the administrative hearing. They extrapolated these numbers, and they cornered the witness into an answer that he couldn't dispute. But we're going to do the analysis, and we're going to present that back to this board. As far as the project, and I'll continue back on the update, it's a six lane, uh, the project is going to be a six-lane section, three lanes in each direction, between 836 and Kendall Drive, mostly at grade. There is an elevated section that runs parallel to A Street, which is across the Pensuco wetlands, against a commitment that we made as part of the CDMP to not disturb those sensitive wetlands. So you have an elevated section. You also have a four-lane section between Kendall Drive and Southwest 136th Street. Again, at grade, and it's going to have all the features that we discussed. The multi-use recreational trail, 18 miles that runs along the entire corridor. It's going to be for bikes, pedestrian, horses. We're going to put every feature that we can to make it attractive so that people can use it. This is also a multimodal facility. We are coordinating with Miami-Dade County to expand on the express bus service that's out there today, the red stripe on the shoulders. We're working on transit stations similar to the Dolphin Park and Ride. Uh, the, air, the exact locations are yet to be determined, but we're working with Miami-Dade Transit on where those locations are going to be, and we're going to make sure that they are optimal for use. So where are we today? As Javier mentioned, the governor's cabinet just approved the, uh, signed the final order and kicked back the, the approved CDMP back to the county. We've re-engaged the willing seller program of the right-of-way, and it was in the budget that you just approved. So we're going to be going back and knocking on doors on the people that are impacted by the project and trying to acquire their, their properties. We're also going to be coordinating and finalizing the PD&E, refining the revaluation, and working with the permitting de departments. As far as land acquisition, to date, through the Willing Seller Program, we've acquired 285 acres. 75 of those acres are within that SERP half-mile buffer. What are we going to do with that? We're going to swap what we've bought in this area with the lands that South Florida already earns, owns in the birth dry basins that we need. We're going to get those wetlands and we're going to restore them into pristine conditions and then turn them back over either to the county or the state for perpetual preservation. So we're actually going to be helping the environment with this project. The environmental permitting agencies that we're going to be coordinating with is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, South Florida Water Management, Florida Department of Environmental Protection, and of course, Miami-Dade County RER. These are the main players that we need to convince that we can make this project work, and we've been doing that. We've been making little changes to the project based on their input. We're doing the reevaluation to make sure that it's consistent with the study that we've already done. Now, to what I consider the good part of this project, how we're going to build it, how we're going to deliver it. I'm not going to sit here and talk about timelines because right now timelines are hard to give and I don't like to give promises that I can't meet. Funding is a critical component of this and that's kind of a variable right now. But the Kendall Parkway program will provide over 10,000 jobs, close to 11,000 jobs in this community, over 30 contracts for construction and professional service and we guarantee that 30% of this program is going to go to small and local business. That's th over $300 million that will go to small and local business as part of developing and implementing this project. We are looking at separating this project into four segments. And I don't want to get stuck in the segments because the segments is really for planning and how we're going to implement. But as funding becomes available, we're, we're going to continue to advance. So there's no specific timeline to any one of these segments. It's just how we plan to do it. And here's a good example of, how, of what we're talking about. We funded, in this program, 
the 137th Avenue improvements between 8th Street and Core Way. That, today, that section is four lanes. It's the only four lane section between 836 and Miller Drive. And 137th Avenue serves as a main conduit that feeds our road. We need to, make, we need to improve it and we need to make it better for traffic. We've made the commitment to this county that we're gonna do that and it's funded in this program and we're going to start with the final design uh, shortly. Another project that we have funded for final design and construction is the widening between 107th Avenue and 97th Avenue and 836. That's a critical project because it's, it's going to accept all the traffic that the Kendall Parkway is gonna bring on from the west. So again, as part of the f available funding, we are advancing the design. And that's important because what we wanna show here is that we're not gonna wait until funding becomes available on these projects. We wanna advance all the components that need to be prepared before you put shovel on the ground. So all the design projects, all the professional service contracts that we can, we're gonna be moving along so that we're always shovel ready as funding becomes available. Segment two, let me just go back real quick. So segment one is the piece between 836 and 157th Avenue. And these are the projects that are associated with segment one. Segment two is between Southwest A Street and Bur and Miller Drive, 56, uh, Southwest 56th Street. And again, you can see that we have little surface roads that we're working with the county on, Southwest 42nd Street, which is a connector. We're, we're coordinating with the county because they also have pro uh, projects programmed to improve those existing roads and then how we connect them. We're looking at how we're gonna deliver that together, whether it's MDX that's gonna do it, whether it's the county who's designing it, but we're doing it together so that we can deliver it on time. So well. Segment three is the main line, it's, it's the area between Biller Drive and 104th, again the multi-use uh, uh, facility. You have improvements on Kendall Drive. This will also include the first of the two transit stations that we have proposed along the corridor. The exact location hasn't been determined yet, but again we're working with Miami-Dade County on how we're going to deliver that. And then finally you have segment four, which is the final piece from 104th Street down to Southwest 36th Street and includes the final, the second of the two transit stations that we have proposed for this project. The implementation of each project is gonna be planned accordingly, but again, the key here is that we are going to be advancing every, every step of this project that we can so that we can be shovel ready as funding becomes available. We don't wanna sit around and wait to have to design something we don't want to wait around for permitting. We're going to do everything in advance with what we have right now, but as funding becomes available, if tomorrow Marie tells me, hey, go build the whole thing, I'm running, but I'm going to get it done. And that's the whole point of this presentation is that we are going to be prepared. We're going to be ready, and we're going to deliver this project as soon as we can. Through the chair. Is your executive director? Yes, through the chair, and to answer a question that was asked, um, you know, uh, Mr. Toledo made a presentation earlier that the unofficial beginning of the Kendall Parkway is the 836-34. That's correct. Which is the westbound ramps to the turnpike, the completing that interchange and making the ramps directly to the Dolphin Park and Ride. So when we, when we advanced that project, we did it purposely because it's important to show this community that we keep our promises and that when we make our promises, they can, they can take it to the bank that MDX will deliver. That project is advanced. We said we would bring back the award for the design builder in January. There is no reason why at some point late next year, we can't have some kind of a ceremony turning dirt on that particular project because there's elements of that project because it's design build that could be advanced. That is important for this community. And I think that's something that we will continue to, to push. And I've basically, you know, without violating any cone of silence, I am challenging the shortlisted firms to deliver on, on, on that promise to our community, which is let's turn dirt as soon as possible. So. From your lips to God's ears. Hey. <laughs> Vice Chairman Moss. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Promises made, promises kept. Amen. We know about that, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, we do. <laughs> um, Mr. Executive Director, uh, and, and I've talked to you about this before, uh, one of the things that I want to just publicly state is and, and make a request 
is that you take a look at um, connecting the parkway the long term to the 874 extension that was just completed. The parkway is going to end on 137th Avenue. The 874 extension ends on 137th Avenue. And there's an opportunity to create a beltway where you could basically go from the parkway to 874 to the Palmetto to 836 and back around the parkway. You know, so uh, I'd like for us to take a look at that, you know, if that's something that we can, can do. That is something that we're putting in, that we put in our program. Okay, and thank you, sir. Also, if we could also add, we're developing the underlying Ludlam Trail. We have a lot of trails that we're developing. There's also some ideas going into the north part of Dade County and coming across and going to the west. So there's a, a great situation when we could have a whole loop around the county that could be done since we are putting in all those factors into um, the park and, uh, parkway. So these are things that people are very interested in and, and things that right now in this planning phase are minute mm -hmm. to be done. So let's, let's also look into that because our cities are already having their own different uh, uh, little underlines and, and, and you know, different types of trails right. that cyclists, uh, runners, walkers, everybody uh, could enjoy. So that's something I would like to also see for the future. Um, there's some trails that we're going out on A Street all the way to Naples. I, I don't know where there's where those are at at this point, but uh, some time ago, if we could remember, it was uh, I don't, I, it, it was the one that was going up A Street all the way to Naples, and it went alongside A Street, and it was meant for the cyclist and, and so on. So yes, it was a shared good, use. Something to look it was at. A shared use. A Mr. Chairman and, and and board members, when we were developing the Kendall Parkway, one of the one of, the, one of the, the, the concerns from the board was that we were adding this uh, multi-use trail. MDX has a multi-use trail already on 836 between 87th Avenue and 107th, the uh, Kitty Real Dell bike path, the, the, the multi-use path. We're gonna extend that west and south with the parkway, but what the board challenged us is they said the Ludlam Trail is now fully funded. Ludlam Trail connects to 836. That missing link between 87th Avenue and the Ludlam Trail needs to be, if you can connect that somehow, in theory, you've got the underline, the Ludlam Trail, and all of the multi-use trails on 836 completely connected in the community. The 8th Street is a shared use lane. Again, would have access to, to a multi-use lane, but we hear you, and that was part of the planning process and part of the conditions that the board put on us, so we will continue to de uh, develop that and report back to you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Madam Treasurer. Well, one comment and two questions on, on the presentation, Juan, thank you. The, first of all, commend the staff for the segmentation. I know you and I had this conversation, what, two, three years ago. Uh, the, or as I call it, the facing. It allows us to face construction, which of course minimizes any disruption potential impact from the project. So kudos on seeing the segmentation. The question then is, is that what allowed us now then to have up to 30 contracts coming out for the construction of this? Because now we've broken it up. Rather than have one giant bid go out, we've broken it up into some pieces and allows us also to help I, some of those small and local businesses to chime in. So early on when we were developing this project and we knew the extent, the magnitude of what we were doing, when you're talking about a, a billion, over a billion dollars, I think it would have been short-sighted on our part to just say we want to get this thing done under one contract and go. I, it's, uh, it's unreasonable to think that we're going to award this to just one player and, and, it's, and it's done. We saw the opportunity here to, to share the wealth of this project and separating it as much as possible, but on, in, in, under a plan that would not delay the project more than it has to, we looked at, at bringing in all the services that we can and, and letting, you know, not, not just design build, not just a conventional, but a combination of a bunch of delivery methods, everything that we can use that's available to us 
to deliver that, and that's why we came up with the amount of contracts that we did, because there's so many components. It's not just the roadway, it's the environmental piece, it's the well and mitigation. These are all different types of contracts that we're gonna have to deal with, different specialties. So the opportunities are there to make sure that we are giving, you know, that, that a lot of people are taking advantage of this and are, and are gonna have a, uh, an opportunity to be a part of this program. Thank you, very broadsided on our part and I, and I commend uh, staff for going that route. And then the second question is I wanna make sure, um, Vice Chairman Moss, thank you for bringing that up, requesting the analysis. Uh, I'm hearing multi-use recreational trail. I'm so happy that we're doing that. I'm hearing the transit uh, partnerships. I'm so happy we're doing that. This project has so many components that have to be taken into account with the analysis. It's not just how short or, or time you're on, you're on the roadway, six minutes or eight minutes or 18 minutes, doesn't matter. It's the, the aftermath, the positive impact, the quality of life uh, uh, increase, all the other components that play part into this particular project. So I wanna make sure that when we get this report, it's gonna be really a comprehensive return on what the true impact of the Kendall Parkway is going to be. Okay. Um. So, Mr. Chairman, you're good? Okay, everybody Thank good? you, Mr. Chair. All right, what do we have left? Informational items? Anything else? Executive Director's Report. Okay, so I guess thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Move it. Moved. <laughs> I knew it was coming. God bless you all. Have a good day.